can't I just write characters? Sure, and you just happen to find these characters in an ancient German s and novel, Herr Dr. Novacek. It's a famous book. Okay, so you didn't have an innocent instant when you were 12? No. In the library no. with a cat? No, again, no. <laughs> Today's guest is a rising star who can currently be seen on Broadway in the acclaimed play Venus and Fur and at home on DVD in Midnight in Paris, which is currently nominated for a Best Picture Oscar. Please welcome Nina Arianda. Hi there. Hi. I love, first of all, I love your name, Nina Thank Arianda. You. Thank you. Is, is, is Arianda actually your middle name? It is my middle name. It is, right? Yeah. What, what is the origin of that? It's such a cool name. Well, from what I understand, it's actually a misspelling on my birth certificate from the hospital. I think it was supposed to be... Arenada. Okay. Ukrainian. Ukrainian. Right. And they put Arianda, and we kept it because it sounded, I mean, I, I, like I had a choice. My mom kept it. <laughs> so. Well, it looks yeah. good on a marquee. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so how does it feel to be up on the marquee? So now you're, you're doing Venus and Fur. Yes. You're in your third run. Yep. So let's see. In 2010, you did it at Classic Stage Company. Right. And then in 2011, you did it at the Samuel J. Friedman Theater. Yep. 2012, you're at the Lyceum Theater. So where, you, where are you going next year? Oh boy, I don't know. <laughs> what is the what's life after the Lyceum? I don't know. <laughs> is it, you've been living with this role and with this script for for so long? Yep. Is it is it is it weird to what's it like to have a script, keep going back to it, have little breaks and? You know, I was really nervous about it at first, and it's it's kind of a it's kind of a blessing because you can't stop unraveling this show or this character. Right. You know, so honestly, it's. I feel like maybe the third time I'll I'll get it. I don't know, you know, because it's really it's so challenging and it's she's it's such a mystery that um, I never stop learning something new, really. And she is a trip. This is this Vonda. Yeah, that's she, fair. She's, she's, fair a, she's a, yeah. a she's a messy actress, like yep. a very New York actress. She explodes onto the stage, like just having been fondled on the subway and. Yeah. She's, there's a lot of these girls walking around, aren't there? Absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty sure I could have been that what, what a mean, version of that. Could have been? Could have been, was, period. Yeah, did you I have, did, have you had moments like that? I don't know if I got groped and then went to an audition, but definitely, <laughs> I definitely have been caught in the rain and just hustling to get somewhere. Yeah. And then having to fix your makeup frantically. Have you, uh, <laughs> what's the craziest, like, crazy actress uh, audition behavior you've seen other people do. Oh, oh man, I don't know. I don't know about actress, but I remember, I remember once as a kid going to an audition and my mom was very cool, you know, she would just wait, let me do my thing. And there was one time we were waiting to go in and the kid had just come out and she was with her mom. And this poor kid was kind of sitting against the wall and her mother was just yelling at her. Really, like really bad, and this kid was like dressed to the nines, you know, beautiful little two braids, and just nasty to her kid. I don't know. That, that's not. Because she didn't nail it. She didn't I don't. I guess she didn't. I guess she didn't, <laughs> she didn't nail it at all. Yeah. You were th you were thrown into that world. Like you were auditioning from what, like age nine or something. Like nine, yeah. But my, I mean, I wanted to, and my I just told my parents that I would like to, and they said, well, let's do it. So you grew up, let, okay, let's go back a little bit. So you grew up in New Jersey, yep. Clifton, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and um, a Ukrainian family. Yes. So tell me, what's the best part about growing up Ukrainian? Oh, I mean, it's, it's a really, it's a wonderful culture. I mean, it's um, really soulful people uh -huh. and uh, uh, dramatic. So I think that there's a plus there for my chosen profession, I think, being Ukrainian in a way. So what do you think got you interested in this? You said when you were nine, you said, you said I want to go do this. What, what I want to do it before, but nine, I guess I just really wanted to give it a shot. Well, what did you in see that inspired you? Did you go to Broadway? Did you watch movies and movies and TV or the certain actors? I don't remember. I don't remember if there was one thing. I just, I mean, we did, we went to shows a lot. We went to the city and saw shows. Uh -huh. I don't know. I guess it was just kind of everything kind of coming together and me uh -huh. just wanting to really try it. You saw Les Miserables, that, that's your first, your first Broadway that show. What do you remember show. about that? I remember that I felt like it, it was an hour. It was, it was so, 
I was just so overwhelmed and I was so prepared for the story. You uh -huh. know, my mom had, we had worked on it for like a week, just getting ready and listening to the soundtrack and she made paper dolls and we like went through oh, the story. Really? Paper it. dolls? Yeah. She, Wait, she, so explain this. She'd make like a cosette doll and an yeah, Eponine doll. Yeah, Eponine and, and we had everybody and, and we kind of went through the story so I didn't go into this, you know. That's amazing. Historical musical, not, not understanding what was going on and so we both really were just in that world, and so by the you know by the time we got to the show, it was like I knew it. I was ready to go, and of course I wanted to be Quizette. I mean, who didn't? Castle on a Cloud was pretty sure every little girl's favorite yeah. song, and who didn't do that at an audition or on my own? Yeah, but okay, you're leading me right in right down a path I wanted to go. So let's every, go. obviously you're on Broadway. Everyone has fallen in love with Nina Arianda. And um, they know that you're beautiful and funny and a great actress. And so now everybody wants you to do a musical. Oh, is that, is that what they yeah, want? Yeah, because it's Broadway. So everyone's right. like, let's, let's put her in Funny Girl. Let's put her in musicals. And so you, you, can you sing? Um, I, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a singer. OK. I enjoy singing. And I would, I'm certainly would be interested in maybe you know, doing that. So you're open day. to that? Yeah, I'm open to it. There it is. There's the announcement. You know, I'm Arianda. open to it. Yeah. Uh, do you want to sing a little Castle on the Cloud right now? Oh, or? no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Got to rest. But you did actually sing that at auditions? Yeah, when I was a kid. Did you sure. ever do any musicals when you were a kid? No. No, no. Annie's lurking in your background? No, no, or? no. I did musicals in, uh, in Germany. When I, when I lived in Germany, I did, uh, I did a couple. I did Edwin Drood. Uh. I did... I did Ain't Misbehavin'. <laughs> well, I was the only of, of white girl in Ain't, Ain't Misbehavin'. <laughs> it was amazing. What'd you sing in that? Uh, Keeping Out of Mischief. Nice. And then, what else did I do? Oh, Zanita and Music Man. Not a lot of singing in that one. A lot of Ye Gods in that one. Is there any video of your Ain't Misbehavin' performance? I don't think so. Mom doesn't have a, a tape somewhere? No, thank God, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so would you be interested in maybe doing Ain't Misbehavin' on Broadway at some point? Would they have, would anyone have me? <laughs> yes. I think so. <laughs> I'm down with that. Yeah. So um, do, can you uh, say something in Ukrainian, or is that annoying for me to ask? No, just tell me what to say. I'll say Why don't it. you say, um, say, tell me what your name is, and say that you want to start Ain't Misbehavin' on Broadway. Right, no, no, because then that could be twisted. No, let's do something <laughs> else. Um, I, my name is Nina Rianda. I am from Ukrainian background. I am very happy to be here with you. And what was that? I said my name is Nina Rianda, yeah. and I come from a Ukrainian background. I'm very happy to be sitting with you today. It's, it sounds beautiful. Do you, you speak it to your parents all the time? We do, yeah. We mix it up. People get confused when I'm on the phone a lot. So it's like, what's it called? It's, 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 it's Spanglish. is obviously Spanish and English. So what would that be right. called? Is there, a, is there a, a name for the lingo? Let's make one up right now. What would it be? What would it be? Um, Ukrainglish. Ukrainglish. Fair enough. Yeah. That works. Yeah, yeah that works. Ukrainglish. That's what I speak. Let's go with that. <laughs> I'm happy with that. <laughs> I speak Ukrainglish. <laughs> And so Hugh Dancy, the dashing Hugh Dancy, yep. is, is your onstage counterpart. So, so what's it like working with him? Are you getting sick of him yet? It's been a while. No, he, no. <laughs> and again, you, how can you when you're constantly evolving yeah. on stage? You know, it, it just it doesn't get boring. Right. And I don't think it can with this play. Because it's every night. It just keeps shifting. Absolutely. And I mean, David Ives is a genius. I mean, he wrote this play with with two amazing really amazing characters and an endless kind of, um, just an endless journey. Right. It's interesting because it's not anything, there's nothing overtly dirty about it, but it is very sexual and it's very sexually charged. It is. Is it hard to work with someone so intimately no. like that? No, if you trust them and I trust Hugh yeah. completely, you know. He's an amazing partner on stage and uh, he, you know, lets me um, play on yeah. stage with him. And yeah. it, that's, I mean, you really can't ask for more, especially in a play like this that's so intimate. Right. You know. We also saw you last season in Born Yesterday, which was, which was brilliant, brilliant and very funny. And um, you, you do very well with these very sexy women. Oh. Is this, what, what was the first time you ever, like, played a really sexy role in something? I mean, ob other than Amos Behaven, obviously. I wore a teddy and Edwin Drood, <laughs> and I had to do like this kick, 
kickball change thing across the stage. I don't know, maybe I ain't misbehaving. <laughs> Honestly, I think maybe that might be it. Really? I think so. Is it yeah. is it natural for you? I don't know. Um, no, I don't think so. No? No. So what, what do you like in, in real life? Actually, I saw in the New York Times you said that they asked you about that. And they said, I have no time for that part of my life. I think they were asking you about like, uh, being like sexually wild in real life or something. Yeah. And you said that you uh, go home, have soup and throat coat and go to sleep and let steam off by watching Downton Abbey. Yes. So that, 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 that's your desire. Oh, have you watched Downton Abbey? <laughs> I mean, it's like. I'm behind. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. That's all you need. That's all you need. Throat coat and, and a good British soap opera. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, I, my job's really important. You know, I, yeah. this, what happened to me and, and I, I mean, I would be really stupid if I if I didn't take care of that right. more in myself. Right. I mean, there are so many actors who want this, yeah. and God knows I want it. And if I feel that if I were to screw up or you know or do something, um, not you know towards being healthy or towards doing you know my job, then yeah. it would be just really a shame. I think you know. So yeah, down nabby and throat coat. That's what I do. And Venus and, <laughs> Venus and Fur really will forever be seen as sort of the show that launched you. So when you were, you were what, a couple months out of NYU when you went in for the audition downtown? I was, yep. And what was the audition like? Did, did you know you nailed it? Did you, did you feel a connection? I don't know. I, 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 really, I really didn't think that I had a shot at it, but I really loved the play. And in a way, that relaxed me a little bit more, knowing that I have a little bit more time with this right. character that I fell in love with in a week. Mm -hmm. I might as well make the most of it. Mm -hmm. And and I did. And I just had a really good time. I try I kind of said do everything you can and then let it go. Who's going to cast a kid out of grad school on a two-hander off Broadway? You know, I just didn't, I really didn't think that was going to happen. So does it and then people start seeing it, the reviews come in and Woody Allen's sister comes and sees it, right? And says that she he has did. to consider you, right? What, what happened? She came and saw it and... She came and saw it. I, this is, I mean, this is just from what I've heard, um, that she came and saw it and, and told Woody about it. And um, I think Woody saw something online that I had done with NYU and, and then called me in to meet him. But yeah. I mean, so there, that's like it's such... It's insane. That's such a moment. It is. I mean, I thought I was, I thought it was some kind of dream honestly I was like is this really happening and I remember meeting it was during a nor'eastern <laughs> so crazy it was crazy but very cool have you had any um, great backstage visitors like during Born Yesterday of Venus and for people you've got to meet that just sort of blew oh, your mind yes I mean they're yes a they're, lot yes it was very exciting who's really blown your mind well Henry Winkler came <laughs> who Fons. was my second crush and I was... Who was your first? Oh, Christopher Plummer. Oh. Captain Von Trapp. Of course. <laughs> Have you met him yet? No. Okay, so that's, that, that's, that's next. He needs to come next. But your second crush, the Fonz. The Fonz. So tell me about Henry Winkler. He was so lovely. He was such a nice guy. And um, he just said that he really enjoyed the show. And that was it. But really, very nice guy. So what was uh, the Tonys? What was it like going to the Tonys last year as a nominee? It was it was really wonderful, and it was I I actually had a really really great time. It was so fun seeing everybody perform and yeah. just being there. And I mean, I obviously have never been, so it was just kind of wide eyed and exciting for me. And you watch it every year on TV, and then you're being there. It's a little surreal. It was eh, a lot surreal, but very exciting. And you looked gorgeous. Thank you. Which brings me to the question: What did you think of Frances McDormand's outfit? Loved it. Denim. Gangster. I <laughs> adore her. I think she is, she's so, oh, she's so cool. It's Tony's such, gangster style. She's, but she's just such a, not only is she insanely talented, but she's such a down-to-earth, lovely person. I mean, really, I, I was so happy to have met her and, you know. I guess if someone else is going to win the category, it's, it's okay if it's Frances McDormand. I guess so. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she's oh, she's so great. Do you have any uh, dream roles that you've thought about? I mean, there's so many. You you know a lot of these cl classic roles. I'm sure you've studied a lot of them in school and anything that you've. I mean, I I would I I've said this before, but it's too early. Um, but Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf would be very exciting. 
uh, something I would really love to do one day. That yeah. sounds good. I think we can do that. Yeah. Let's get that done. Let's what, do how many years? Like 15, 20? Yeah. 15, uh, Can we just book it now so that <laughs> I don't, yeah. I would love to do that. I mean, I, I would, I just, I love working. I don't know. There's just so many things I would love to do. You've been able to dip your feet in film. You were in Tower Heist. You were in Win Win, mm -hmm. uh, Higher Ground. Is is it is it fun? Do you like the the on camera work? Um, it's really fun. It's very it's very different, and it's it's I love it because I'm just learn I'm learning. So every time that I I work on that, I I just kind of watch everybody around me so I can figure out what to do. But so, it's fun. And uh, Midnight in Paris obviously turned into a huge, I mean, it's like the most successful Woody Allen film ever, financially, I believe. Is it, yeah? Yeah. So it's a Wonderful film. Uh, what, what is it like? I mean, what is it like actually being in that mm -hmm. environment, being on one of those sets in Europe, right? You were in Paris. And... We were in Paris, yes. And honestly, the, everyone that I worked with um, was just wonderful. Yeah. So nice and uh, just great. I mean, I can't say enough good things about that experience. It was just amazing, really. Yeah. And you have a lot of funny moments. Did, were you happy when you saw the finished film? Yes, yes. Do you, do you hate watching yourself? I do, <laughs> I do, I do. You're probably never going to watch this, are you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no, no. What about when you see yourself like in the, the sexy like Venus and for ads and stuff? Do you, do you watch I do. I do this. Do you? Yeah. And <laughs> you, can't, you can't handle it? Mm-mm. Well, you're very pretty to look at, so well, thank you, you should get used to it. Oh. You're, you're going to be in a lot of films and posters and stuff like we'll that. We'll see, we'll see. I actually want to ask you about another quote that I read because it's very specific uh -oh. from Time Out New York. This is from a okay. few years ago. Um, you said, I've cleaned bathrooms in theaters, I've sold wine in theaters, I've sold tickets because I will do anything, anything to stay in this world. So I want to know which toilets you've cleaned. Like, where, where did this happen? It was, it was in uh, Heidelberg, Germany. Okay at uh, a theater that really took me in and and uh, just let me let me do anything to watch the shows and huh. to do a roadside theater in Heidelberg um, amazing and what were you doing and why did your family end up in Germany my dad's job he was working in Jersey oh. and then you know his job moved to, to Germany do you have friends from Germany I do yeah yeah was it, uh, so it was like your teenage years or were you? It was teenage years, yep. Wow, so it was like. I went to high school there and um, yeah, I had a lot of German friends, German-Ukrainian friends, and then obviously, you know, Americans who I went to school with. Huh. Mm -hmm. So it was a sort of a, it sounds like it was an important time in your life, actually. It was a short time, but. Very, yeah, very important. Um, sure, I mean, it's high school, you know, but it's very different growing up there and it's, it's um, it was great. I mean, we had prom in a castle, you right. know, and uh, if you studied Normandy in school, you know, you went to Normandy. So it's, it was a really unique experience growing up there. Are you saying that they didn't have proms and castles in Clifton, New Jersey? Not that I know of, <laughs> unless the Hilton is shaped like, don't they have a Hilton that's shaped like a, or a Sheridan? It's a sh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they might have it there, but I don't know. Thank you so much for coming in. It was Thank so you. nice to talk to you. Very and nice to uh, to you. I love Venus and Fur, and everyone needs to check it out now at the Lyceum Theater on Broadway. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.